Hello everyone and welcome back to something that I think is going to be really exciting for us today to go through annual fiscal reports from giant companies. Yes, Nintendo has released its annual report for 2023. Uh, I'm not going to go through the entire thing because it's almost 100 pages long, but there is uh, one or two areas that I do want to comment on today in particular. So uh, these are two elements that I think actually reflects quite poorly on Nintendo as a company. So the report starts, as you can see here, with a whole bunch of boring financial stuff. It's all of the financial data, as you would expect, net sales, operating profit, ordinary profit, uh, assets, just a lot of big numbers on a spreadsheet that equates to millions upon millions of dollar and yen. We also have a list here of uh, subsidiaries and associates, you know, probably the most notable of which being Nintendo of America. Absolutely riveting stuff. The stuff I want to get into is the employee statistics as seen here. So as of March the 31st, 2023, uh, 7,317 people work for Nintendo directly. The part that I want to draw attention to in particular is this part here next to my head. Number three, labor unions. Labor unions do not exist in the company, but have been formed at some of its consol consolidated subsidiaries. Labor management relations have been good, and there are no particular matters to be noted. I, th I think many uh, employees at Nintendo of America would be inclined to disagree with that, with the company being accused of direct retaliation against protected labor activity. During the month, uh, last year, during the month of April, an expose from Kotaku alleged that the Mario Maker maintained a cyclical work contract work for low wages, expected overtime, and a lack of benefits. Uh, and then in May of that year, IGN released a report in which Nintendo contractors criticized the company's culture and their treatment. Uh, among the allegations, the contract staff has said they were doing the work of full-timers, got paid, and treated worse. Yeah, not a good look. But you know, if you ask Nintendo directly, eh, it's, it's, it's all good. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't don't look at that. That's a Nintendo of America, not Nintendo. Totally different things. But this is the part that I found really interesting. So number four, the proportion of management positions held by female workers, rate of childcare leave taken among male workers, and the pay gap between male and female workers. Now, on the one hand, I think it's commendable that Nintendo is actually tracking these but they're also not a good look for the company now it, it could be that it's now it, it's like a legal requirement to to uh report on this stuff uh but yeah so the proportion of the number of management positions held by female workers is currently 4.2 percent that's uh y you know even if you're not necessarily a bit of a statistics person um the, the proportion of the human population worldwide and of Japan is about 50-50. So that's quite a, uh, that's quite a demographic uh, mismatch there, which um, it's not a good look. And there's a little bit of a, uh, a confusing statistic here in regards to the pay gap. So they track the pay gap in terms of a percentage. Uh, so all workers, the male versus female pay gap is 70.1%. Now, I'm assuming that that means that women, on average, earn about 70% of the amount that a, uh, a male worker would at the company, on average. I'm assuming that doesn't mean that there's a 70% difference, in which case it means that women are earning a third. That, you know, we're, as critical as I might be of Nintendo today, I'm assuming things aren't that bad, but that's still not particularly good. Uh, regular employees, that gap is about 72%, and part-time and temporary workers, that's 91.3%. And they attempt to explain this here, uh, and it's this part here. So the pay gap between male and female regular employees is mainly due to differences in the length of service and average age. There is no difference in treatment between men and women in terms of salary or evaluation systems. And that's kind of the point. So, it, okay, let, let, me, let me start off here. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't believe in the wage gap, you're not going to be convinced by anything I have to say today. Nintendo showing that there is a substantial pay difference on average between men and women, and then saying, oh, but it's not due to discrimination. 
it's got to be due to something, right? And what they've identified here is how this system perpetuates itself. So yes, there isn't someone at Nintendo who, when he's not pissing on Gary Bowser from his window, is saying, hmm, yes, I believe today I will not pay women as much. That's not how that works, right? How this manifests itself is in regards to uh, workplace hiring practices, how management or executives at the company move in certain social circles, how if you're a woman, maybe the, uh, the working environment or the workplace culture is less conducive to spending a long time at that company. There's been some very notable examples, especially in like large Japanese companies where if they don't want you to work at that company, they won't fire you. They will just make it an incredibly hostile work environment to live in. It's actually quite a well-known method of basically firing someone without firing. Yeah, length of service and average age. It, I mean, that just says to me either women don't last long at the company or it's a issue in terms of the kinds of people that tend to get hired into management positions at Nintendo. And that's, you know, that's kind of the argument that you find with a lot of people who, oh, well, why don't you just hire the best person for the job? Yeah, but this lends itself to these kind of hiring practices and employment practices, which result in situations like this. Uh, this is actually explained in this games industry article a lot better than I ever could. You see, nothing to see here. Nintendo's gender pay gap has nothing to do with sexism. It's purely a result of the company's historical tendency to only hire, retain, and promote men. It's a very, it's a much more eloquent way of saying it than I did. <laughs> and I am just gonna, I am just gonna defer to games industry a little bit here, because they actually go into another uh, statistic that is actually quite interesting when you look at it in more detail. Uh, this actually gets to another eyebrow-raising eyebrow stat in Nintendo's report, one that on the surface seems like a good thing. 14.3, the average length of service for a Nintendo full-time employee, the average of whom is 39.9. That's no accident. In an industry notorious for job insecurity, Nintendo has resisted layoffs at every turn. While some companies are quick to cut staff even while reporting record results, Nintendo has been slow to cut staff no matter how dire its situation. Quote, If we reduce the number of employees for better short-term financial results, however, employee morale will decrease. And I sincerely doubt employees will fear that they may be laid off will be able to develop software titles that could impress people around the world. Uh, in mid-2013, then-Nintendo president Satoru Iwata uh, pushed back against a shareholder suggestion to restructure the company as the Wii U clearly struggled early in its lifespan. As an employee, that is absolutely the attitude you want your boss to have. It's certainly preferable to a boss who would rather instill skepticism and pessimism and fear in his employees, but there is a downside to that approach, as we can see from the pay gap figure. There are cultural and structural explanations for why Nintendo's long-tenured senior staff is overwhelmingly male. The individuals didn't have to be actively misogynistic, in, filing, in filling each and every uh, role over the decades to make this happen, they just had to keep hiring and promoting the best man for the job, never really thinking about why that person so often happened to be a man. Yes. Again, a very eloquent way of putting it that I wasn't really <laughs> capable of. They just had to not see the gender imbalance at the company as anything that needed addressing or anything that was their responsibility to address. Nintendo is at least recognizing now that a gender pay gap is an undesirable thing, but its attitude towards rectifying the problem seems far too passive to put a dent in the effects of decades of systemic discrimination. Uh, that's not to say that everything is negative. So back in 2022, Nintendo actually said that it hoped to increase the number of uh, male employees at the company taking time off to rear their newborn children. Uh, as part of paternity leave, up to 50%. Um, and as can be seen in the graph here next to my head, the rate of childcare leave among male workers is actually currently at 78%. So that is something that's really taken off at the company over the past year. And I think that's genuinely... That, that, that is genuinely a good thing. You know, uh, having a baby is one of the most stressful times of anyone's life um, on both parents... And the ability for new fathers to be at home with their partners, with their children, is genuinely a really valuable thing. 
and can really only be a good thing for those families. So, uh, you know, credit where credit's due. Bravo on that respect, Nintendo. And uh, the last quote, again, uh, highlighted here in the Games Industry article, which uh, I want to highlight, is uh, this quote here. So, as our consumers' interests and preferences continue to diversify in the world of entertainment, leveraging a diverse workforce is crucial for raising the collective strength of the company. At Nintendo, we actively hire and promote talent regardless of factors such as age, nationality, disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity. The company wants diverse talent, as written here, but it explicitly does not take diversity into consideration when hiring and promoting. Um, and it also doesn't pay women as much, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay, obviously it's good that they at least say that they're not disc is that they say that they're not discriminating but it's also not taking any active efforts to rectify maybe how homogenous the workplace is which yeah okay guys um so yeah that's it i mean the the the, uh, the parts of the report that i wanted to focus on today is primarily in regards to that pay gap um, and also in terms of some of the social and the demographic changes at the company that the company wants to do and also apparently isn't particularly interested in doing either. Financially, Nintendo's fine. They will continue to be fine. Um, if they're ever not going to be fine, they can just release a Mario or a Zelda game and then they'll just print money. That You, you know, they're, they're going to be okay. But yeah, what do you think? And do you think I'm being overly harsh on the company here? Do you think that Nintendo could be doing better? Please let me know. Uh, that being said, if you enjoyed what I'm doing here, then please leave me a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and uh, please check out my Twitch channel where the link will be in the description below. Although my uh, account isn't yet able to post hyperlinks, but you'll be you, you'll be alright. I'm sure you, you can know how to copy paste, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, I will see you in the next one.